that part two, including a malignant fibroid region. So just a quick review of uh, crowded space, post-thyroid, parapharyngeal space. So the product ground of product space is behind the mandible, but then very closely associated with crowded space, which including internal coagulant artery and internal jugular vein, as well as cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, uh, as well as parapharyngeal space, which is predominantly fat, uh, including some minor thyroid gland, lymphoidal tissue, and a nerve and a vessel. Product space is immediately posterior to the masticator space, and also uh, including a mandible. And facial nerve is running through the product gland, uh, exiting from cytomastoid or foramen. And you have a retromandibular vein and also a branch of external acquired artery in the product gland. So malignant product gland lesion, again, it's only 20% of product gland of tumor is malignant, but uh, there are several pathologies that you need to keep in mind. One is a mucoid epidermoidal carcinoma, which is most common product gland primary malignancy. And this lesion arises from glandular ductal exterior. And compared to the other product gland benign lesion that I showed in the part one. It looks more irregular and a little bit more ill-defined. Um, this one is inside a product gland and not violating a product gland capsule, but it can be very infiltrated. Uh, and also, mucoidermodal calcinoma is often associated with rings node metastasis. Not many other uh, product gland malignancies has a lymph node metastasis, but mucoid motor carcinoma does have a lymph node metastasis. This is another case of a 65 year old woman with mucoid motor carcinoma. Notice the border is not well defined, very infiltrative, aggressive looking, and also violate the, 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 the prodigal capsule, extends outside of prodigal, in fact, is involved the entire masticator muscle. And also media of the muscle. Notice the bone margin of this uh, mandible is quite different from the bone margin of the left side, which is normal. So that there is some bony erosion. Um, and also, it does extend to the submandibular space. Uh, so it's a very infiltrated mass region on this case. On the coronal view, actually, you can see the mass is clearly embedding to the massive trach muscle as well as the medial stegoda muscle. Notice this normal medial stegoda muscle on the contralateral side. It does extend to involve the submandibular space. So the submandibular gland is no longer seen on the right side. And the bone seems to be much more thinner or eroded compared to the contralateral side. Notice there is an abnormal cervical lymph node, so this is nodal metastasis from paragon mucoidermoidal carcinoma. The second most common product malignancy is adenoidal cystic carcinoma. And notice the mass region in the deep lobe of the product gland. Um, it, it, it does involve the mandible. Notice this bone destruction of the inner cortex of the ascending ramps of the mandible. And then tumor invades directly into the bone. So these are very aggressive imaging feature, not seen in a benign side by gland tumor. When you look carefully, because adenoidal cystic is notoriously common to have a perineural spread, and the facial nerve is running through the product parenchyma, you have to follow the facial nerve. And when you look a little higher up, this is the internal auditory canal, and you see that this is part of the ISC, the enhancement of the canalicular portion of the internal uh, facial nerve, and also labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve, and also the ganglia of the facial nerve, all abnormally enhancing. So that finding is indicative of uh, uh, perineural spread of the adenoidal cystic carcinoma arising from the body. This is unusual pathology, but product gland primary squamous cell carcinoma. This is a T1 weighted axial image, which is really the great way to look at where the lesion is and also how.
how much you're placing a normal fat. Notice this mass lesion is infiltrating to the muscle of the mastication, the muscles involved, and also cutaneous extension with the dermal metastasis. And these have very, very aggressive looking appearance. It's almost like it's a give a sense of involvement of the temporal mandibular joint. And the primary uh, product on the squamous cell costume is very rare. It's reported to be 1% or even less than 1%. But it does happen that this is really the worst prognosis than ketanic squamous cell carcinoma. And also much worse than polygon other cancer such as nucleus dermoid or adenocystic cancer that I show you. Pain you are spread on so lymph node metastasis are also negative pro prognostic factor for this case. And you can see the mass region is not only this superficial product embedded to the masticator muscle, but that's kind of like a arching around the posterior to the retromandibular space. And then this is the indication of tumor spread along the auricular temporal nerve, which is front of trigeminal nerve. Notice the same findings, the ill defined, the, the mass region in the superficial product invading to the mass area, uh, muscle, and also extending through the uh, posterior to the mandible. This is the area that auricular temporal nerve is running. And this is a branch of a trigeminal, D3, a third branch of a trigeminal nerve. And it's really conduit between facial nerve and a trigeminal nerve. So this finding is indicative of this region is involving a nerve, so perineural spread along the auricular temporal uh, nerve. And colonial images show the multiple things of the metastasis. So this patient has a squamous cell carcinoma that is really bad prognosis to begin with. Plus, perineal spread also then to the metastasis. Notice the malignant polygon tumor tend to be more hypo intense on T2 weighted images as compared to uh, BMT that I show you, much more T2 wide region. So, that indicative of very highly cellular region, not the water rich uh, region. That's another thing you should keep in mind. This patient had a squamous, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin that metastasized to the intraparotid lymph node. Notice there's an enlargement of the intraparotid lymph node with, again, same findings, a little linear tu tubular lesion uh, posterior to the mandible. And then this is the spine. When you see something tubular like this, and extending from the protagonal to medial portion, it does indicate of auricular temporal nerve spread. And a higher up images, knowing this abnormally enlarged and also markedly enhancing plumbing or valley, uh, also plumbing valtundin, B2 nerve, uh, and a, a pretty stereoparting foster involvement. So those findings are very essential that uh, uh, the lesion is spreading all to their skull base and the cranial nerve is not good surgical candidate. The lymphoma tend to be quite diffuse findings, and so this is a primary product, primary lymphoma that has a huge diffuse enlargement of the lung lobe, not having aggressive bone destruction despite the size of the tumor, which is also similar to what we see in that lymphoma in the elsewhere. Lymphoma can be bilateral, although much more commonly unilateral, and this is a case of bilateral primary product, primary lymphoma. When you see the skin region deep inside it in beta protagonal, so this might be a secondary instead of primary protagonal squamous cell carcinoma. Again, very aggressive characteristics, dermal thickening, and also invasion to the masseteric muscle. You don't really see the differentiation between tumor border and masseteric muscle. When you see the large region in the skin or involving oral cavity cancer involving the skin, when you see the protagonal mass region, most likely is the metastasis to the intra uh, product uh, lymph node. So, this is a large cancer involving the oral cavity with dermal invasion. Because of the lymphatic drainage from the dermal region of the face and scalp goes through protagonal intra product lymph nodes, this is not a protagonal 
primary tumor, but this is intrapotidine, it's not a metastasis from underlying skin squamous cell carcinoma. Product one could have a site of metastasis from elsewhere. And this is the renal cell carcinoma metastasized to the product one. Notice this ill-defined, aggressive-looking mass region in a product one in a patient with renal cell carcinoma. And this is a biopsy-proven metastasis. The other metastasis could happen to the product one include melanoma. So you could think of the melanoma if it's a scalp or face, most likely like a lymph node metastasis, but this is melanoma elsewhere, much lower body part, metastasized to the product one. So in summary, product space malignant lesion, in terms of uh, primary product one cancer, three big one is mucoid motor carcinoma, adenocystic carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, but I show you a rare case of a squamous cell carcinoma that is very bad at prognosis. Metastasic tumor to the nose, intrapotent lymph nodes, includes skin squamous cell carcinoma or melanoma in the face or scalp. But you could have a systemic involvement, such as lymphoma or metastasis to the product line. And common primary site include renal cell carcinoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, and also melanoma. With that, I'll end this is the end of the part two.